Hey guys, Frugal Prepper again. Um, <clears throat> thought I'd do a real quick video here about uh, gas prices and uh, their impact on uh, on everything. So uh, obviously uh, prices are, are jumping up again. They're uh, close to $4 now, at least here in the Midwest they are. Uh, they're expected to hit $5 come summertime and, uh, and all the uh, summertime travel. So uh, one of the things I guess I wanted to talk about briefly was um, just the impact that's going to have in general. So uh, it's not just food, but the, the rising fuel costs actually have a direct impact on everything, uh, you know, whether it be heating your home or water, uh, pretty much anything that uh, relies on fuel from a supply chain perspective. Uh, as those costs to bring you stuff go up, they're, um, they're going to pass that cost along to you. They're not going to eat it for sure. So what that means is that uh, any uh, any food that you stock up on today is going to probably be less expensive than uh, food you're going to stock up on uh, three months from now. So uh, from a frugality standpoint, I figured I'd start pointing this out. Um, there's a couple of real good links out there. A lot of the guys that I work with um, ask the question, you know, how do I how do I know what it is I have, uh, or at least you know how do I how do I know I have enough? And uh, I wanted to point out the um, uh, emergency essentials website they've actually got this thing called the food storage calculator or food storage analyzer uh, it's actually a pretty handy tool um, it's uh, allows you to basically plug in the stuff that you're gonna get either from uh, from them and I've bought stuff from them in the past from uh, uh, some uh, freeze-dried stuff but uh, it lets you plug in uh, their their items uh, and it'll actually do some calculation for you uh, or the cool thing is you can actually go over here to this link for uh, grocery store and canned foods um, and actually jump through there and uh, enter values of things that uh, that you would buy at the grocery store. They're just kind of generics here, but um, and it'll actually give you kind of a breakdown of uh, of what those things uh, would consist of. So basically, the analyzer. This is kind of the uh, just the try it version. It's free. It's not like you have to do anything except for register. But you'll notice it's just set up for one person right now. Uh, so I'm going to leave it as it is and just do a quick run through here. Uh, of some of the things that uh, say perhaps you want to um, uh, add to your list. So for example, let's just do a couple of things here like uh, like fresh cut green beans. We'll do 10 of those. Um, we'll do uh, 10 kidney beans. I don't necessarily like kidney beans, but that's okay. Um, chicken broth. We'll just kind of jump down here and say uh, canned chicken. We'll do 10 of those. Bear with me here. I'll go through this real quick. Uh, All-purpose flour. Oh yeah, I gotta have a 50-pound bag of that stuff. Um, and again, I'm going pretty quick. Mac and cheese. But again, you get an idea. As you know, you can go through here and pick stuff that you're getting at the store. Uh, you can actually add your own items too. I'll show you that in a second. But um, you know, as you go through here and and you um, actually stock up on stuff. Peanut butter is a good example. Lots of good fat and protein. Um, you can enter in, and it'll actually, if you register, it'll keep an, a running list of all the stuff you got. I recommend this to, to all the guys that have been asking me about how to keep track of what they got, how to do an inventory, and how to actually get a good accounting of what they've got. Uh, we'll do some white rice in a 50-pound bag, uh, some canned salmon, and I think we're pretty close to done. Maybe, may I jump to the end here? Oh, yeah, spam. Got to do some of that. Um, didn't want to skip the spam. No preppers. Rations are done until you get some spam in there. All right, and then we'll do uh, chunk tuna. And if you do calculate, <clears throat> kind of cool over here on the right, it's actually going to tell us um, it's going to tell us uh, for one person we've actually got 103.3 or excuse me 105.35 days. It has the total calories from fat and cholesterol, sodium, dietary fibers, sugars, etc. Uh, shows us we got 92 cans, about 136 pounds in, in goods there. Um, and so, again, 105 days, not bad, three months uh, for the stuff that I chose there. And again, it's only 136 cans. Now, again, this is just a loose estimation of the things that uh, you should store. In, in fact, I've, you need to have a better balanced diet. So you need fat, you need some sugars, you need some fruits and, and vegetables and things like that. But this is, at the very least, a really good way of, of understanding uh, what, how much you have and how much more you need to add. So the other cool thing I like about it is the, that hundred and some days that we just had, I can actually go in there and, and um, change the breakdown in my family uh, and say I got a 12 year old female and I got a 10 year old female and I got an eight year old male. Uh, and it's actually going to update for us the, um, 
daily caloric requirements. So you'll notice it's it's gone from a 2,000 daily calorie requirement to 1,600 for the older kids and 1,400 for the younger kid. And then if we go back to the analyzer, uh, it's actually changed now. Our food storage now is 24 days. So you can go through and, and again, you can pick any of the, uh, the products that they sell in Emergency Essentials. You can add MREs in there if you had those. Again, grocery store and canned foods. And then the other thing I thought was kind of cool was you can add your, uh, your own items. Now you have to log in for that one. Again, there's no charge, uh, but it allows you to actually put in stuff that you don't, they don't have at least in their generic page here. Um, I'll put this link in the, uh, in the video. Uh, the other thing I wanted to point out was another site called foodstoragemadeeasy.net. Um, and they've actually got down here a Excel spreadsheet, which I opened up. And this spreadsheet kind of does the same thing. If you can see here, I basically put in um, three adults, two kids, three months, and it actually breaks it down for you as to how many pounds or quantity of stuff that you need to buy. And this is actually a more balanced spreadsheet from a planning standpoint. It actually gives you a breakdown of grains, fats, uh, oils, sugars, milk, uh, essentials, and things like that. So um, you may want to use this for your planning, and obviously it's really nice to have the spreadsheet so you can uh, print it out, uh, keep it with your inventory. But I'll put these links in the uh, in the video. Again, it's really good to um, good to have. The one other thing I guess I wanted to point out was if you look up dollar cost averaging, um, basically it's uh, another insurance policy, right? So a real easy example would be if you um, uh, if you spend 50 cents on a can of beans today and three months from now when the fuel has jumped up fuel prices have jumped up and that same can of beans is a dollar uh, if you eat from your stores um, then you're obviously saving money because you're not going to have to run out to the store and buy uh, a can of beans for a buck when you've got it on a shelf in the basement or in the pantry for 50 cents um, so it's an insurance policy it's uh, it's certainly from a frugality standpoint a way to make sure that you stretch your dollar as far as possible um, and again, eat what you store and store what you eat. So the stuff you're buying, you don't go out and buy MREs and throw them on a shelf and then expect to make your kids or, or you have to, you know, force them down. Um, I just buy what you normally buy. Obviously, as you're, we're seeing fuel prices go up, I would uh, invest uh, in a little extra and set it aside. Again, it can't hurt. It's Again, if you're buying what you eat, it's not going to hurt to have some extra. It's one less trip to the store. Um, and, you know, it's uh, just like when we had the big storms uh, in the wintertime here in the Midwest, when they announced a blizzard was coming, people went out like crazy and started buying up the stuff off the shelves. Uh, if we have uh, instances like we did a couple of years ago, we might find that the, um, there's another trucker strike and that the shelves just aren't full because they're not delivering and stocking them as, as frequently as possible. There's... Uh, there's a uh, rule of thumb that pretty much, uh, you know, the stores in any given population center only carry about three days worth of food for all the people in that area. So if you think about uh, three days worth of food at the store, plus, you know, the average household, uh, and again, this varies, but the average household has anywhere from three days to a week of food at home uh, if they don't prepare uh, in as little as, uh, you know, a week and a half, two weeks. Um, you could have people looking for food that's just not uh, getting getting to the shelves quickly enough. So. Um, as far as your, uh, you know, frugality and your prepping go, I think it, it warrants um, some additional savings and investment right now to get yourself uh, a little better prepared, first off, and uh, to hopefully um, create some insurance and, uh, from the, uh, the rising costs of, uh, of pretty much everything. So uh, I'll talk to you later.